Yeah, welcome, sir. You are welcome, Mr. Shijolu Omi. You are welcome. Uh, you can now take the floor. Thank you. Go ahead. You're welcome. Unmute me. Yeah, 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 you're on. You're on. Mr. Shiju, you're on. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Okay, we want to look at uh, we want to look at personal crisis. And I want to say good morning to, to the ladies and gentlemen in the class. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in your midst to share some ideas. And I hope that um, there will be a lot of takeaway for us, uh, each and every one of us from this class. Now, the times are peculiar, but then human beings are made to dominate, to get around whatever the issues are. And as um, as, uh, as workers in different areas of ende endeavor, it is a challenge, it is an individual challenge to cope with uh, whatever the situation is now. And so, uh, as typical of me, I'm going to start by standing on the shoulders of uh, giants with these quotes that people have given previously. Because standing on their shoulder makes you to see further and understand the situation better. Now, one of the quotes um, before us is the one that says, crisis is when you can't, you can't say, let's forget the whole thing. A crisis is when you can't say, let's forget the whole thing. Crisis undermines whatever venture or activities one is doing. And so, because those activities mean a lot to us, we don't want to just forsake it. And so, it's, crisis has the capacity to arrest our attention or grab it, as, it, as the case may be, to make sure that whatever it is that we are dealing with, we can't let go. We can't just forget it. We just have to attend to it. Uh, if not immediately, as quickly as possible. The second quote says that the secret of crisis management is not good versus bad. It is preventing the bad from getting worse. It is preventing the bad from getting worse. When you have crisis in your hand, you can help it. It has started. The best you can do is to find a way to turn it. To reduce it, to reduce the impact of it, so that it doesn't go from bad to worse. You want to make sure you kind of halt it if you can, so that it doesn't deteriorate too quickly or badly. That is the um, the rationale behind intervention in crisis. Today, we need to understand the fact that the life of every human being, and even the creatures of human beings, are. Uh, uh, it's a kind of mixed bag. It has the good and the bad. It's always in there, one way or the other, at one time or the other. You have good times, and then comes the bad times. Crisis can be regarded as bad times. Now, this is a reality we have to contend with. And because it's almost sure to come, probably can be good point. We need to make it, I mean, we need to understand the reality that it is inevitable. It will come one day. Uh, um, and so we must expect it. So that when it comes, we can grapple with it and make progress. And the only way we can do that is to prepare ahead. Once we prepare, it enhances, by planning that is, it enhances reducing the impact it will have in our lives. And I, I dare say that if we don't do that, we stand to face what I would call very serious or grievous consequences. So we, we must prepare, I mean, wisdom dictates that we must prepare for, for uh, challenges, which we can also regard as, as, as crisis. And my hope is that this program, which is essentially to sensitize us to those realities, we will not we will take it very seriously. 
let, let me give more insight to what crisis that word crisis means. It means a lot to every one of us. But we need to regard crisis as a stalemate, a situation where we can't move forward most times. It is a problem. We can look at it as an emergency. It is dangerous because it's not, it's not a palatable thing. It is also a disruption. Every activity or plan you have either to get suspended because you have to move into what I would call the survival mode to make sure you can arrest that, that, that emergency or catastrophe as quickly as possible because leaving it makes the situation to degenerate even beyond one's imagination. So let's have that understanding that crisis involves all of these things and even more. So what really is crisis? Because that is expected to lead to an unstable and dangerous situation. Unstable and dangerous situation. And it can affect you and I. We are not immune to it. It can affect an organization. It can affect community. And in this instance, like we have this coronavirus issue, it's a global thing. So it affects the whole society. Everybody is grappling with it. Now, the how we, we felt it won't go this far. How, 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 how can we be, I mean, how mistaken, I mean, how careless we are, I mean, we trust, I mean if, we, if we look back. But the point is that crisis generally is not unexpected. It's unpredictable, but it's not as unexpected. Based, based on what we have discussed earlier, it is inevitable. And that's why we are saying that it is very expedient to plan for crisis. It is expedient. That is the challenge before you and I. We must plan for crisis. Now, crisis represents two things. We have talked about the dangerous side, the, the negative side earlier. But it also offers an opportunity, in which case, behind every crisis are uh, opportunities or openings that we can make maximum, maximum use of. And that's why we said every crisis is an opportunity to shrink or expand. Shrinking does not mean demise. It just, it just it's, it's like as an individual, it just tells you to prioritize what you are doing. If, if for instance, you've been spending 100K a week and suddenly you have challenges, you hardly can find 50K to spend, it just means you need to Look for the key things that are the essential things in your life and manage yourself accordingly until the situation comes. And it also represents an opportunity that will cause expansion in your scheme of things or business as the case may be. So crisis will not be looked at as something that look, uh, you can't, you don't want. Nobody wants it, but it will come whether you like it or not. There are some common characteristics of, of crisis. And one of them is that it comes up unexpectedly. Very little warning is given. Sometimes you don't even envisage it at all. So it can come up or materializes unexpectedly. Now when it comes up, good and hard decisions have to be made as quickly as possible. Decisions are required. We make decisions every day in our daily living. You and I are products of, uh, of, of decisions we have made in the past. But in this case, making decisions, you don't have the luxury of time. So the time is short because it's something that happened unexpectedly and you have to find a way around it. And as it, as it drags, there is a sense of loss of control because it's, it's getting worse. But the pressure builds so rapidly that you can be overwhelmed by it, and I pray not. 
and that is the reality. Your usual thing, the routine that becomes more difficult, sometimes almost impossible, and in some cases, reputation suffers. Imagine you have customers you can provide or, 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 or give the regular product or services that you render to. It will affect their operations, and so it retains your reputation. There are some things if you are hard up personally uh, that you have to shelf in your scheme of uh, program, and those who benefit either to, from it uh, may start looking down on you, in which case you may have some even personal reputation suffering. Now, two things were mentioned in our topic. We talked about personal effectiveness and crisis. We have looked at crisis, so it's, it only makes sense to take a second look at what uh, effectiveness is all about. Effectiveness is such a common word that many of us don't understand its real import or meaning. And so this is a platform for us to understand that it is different from efficiency, which we most times mix it with. And um, one management guru of late, of, uh, of, of late now, I mean, is late now, gives a clear distinction, as short as you can imagine. It says that effectiveness is doing the right thing. And that's, I'm talking about Peter Drucker here. Effectiveness is doing the right thing. In which case, some things are right to do. Some are not. But what is important is getting to doing the right thing. That is effectiveness. Now, if you can compare that to um, efficiency, which is doing things right. Efficiency is doing things right. Now, the challenge is, if you are not doing the right thing, you may be doing the wrong thing. And it doesn't matter how well you do those wrong things, they don't have, they don't have value. They, they are a wasted effort. So uh, um, be careful to make sure that you are doing the right thing at the right time at all times, as, as much as you can, as, as much as it's within your, 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 your capacity or your, or your frame, um, your control. Now, when you do the right thing, you are talking of being effective. Now, it is also producing the result that is wanted or desirable or intended. Effectiveness is producing the, the result that is intended and uh, wanted. The Oxford Dictionary looks at it as producing a successful result, in which case what matters is that success. It must be wanted. It must be done you know, well to bring about the result desired. Having that in mind, and so we have some of them here, like drive or determination. Are, are you driven? Am I driven? Am I determined to succeed or get to the bottom of the work I'm doing or do the right thing when I have to? Are you are you self-reliant? Can you depend? Are you confident to say, look, I can do this? Are you sure of yourself? Are you confident? Being told or prompted? That is the question. Are you that optimistic that what you want to do or you are doing will bring the desired result or produce success? And most of the time, and in this age and There must become a, a kind of connection, a relationship. Look, there are so many people you are not bothered about. Have relationship, in which case there must have been some give and takes in between, such that, you know, by human nature we owe ourselves. And so when the need arises, everybody wants to pay back. That is the beauty of relationship giving a helping hand here. And so when informations are communicated, when 
assistance that are needed, when promptness is required, you can have it from people to whom you are connected. So if you are connected to your team, you will be rest assured. And, and when I'm talking of connection now, there must be some emotional relationship, if you understand what I'm, do you genuinely care about them or not, for instance, uh, and vice versa, such that you want their well-being because whoever is not fine can do what is required. Now, quickly, when we talk about persistence, it means that you don't want to give up. When you relate persistence to determination, there is a close relationship in there. It could take a while to achieve whatever you want to, but you are, you, you are, you, you, you are not giving up. You are, you are pushing forward. At least there is some incremental improvement, if you like whatever it is that you are doing and aiming at so that eventually you will get there. And that's why the one about resilience is key. Sometimes you get to doing some things and you get overwhelmed somewhere along the line. You could suspend it, but the spirit of getting things done in terms of resilience comes up. And so you bounce back to face it that, look, this thing can challenge me. I should be able to handle it well. And then you want to make sure that that happens. Now, let's talk about integrity, and it's simply about being truthful, being honest, uh, being man that keeps his word or promises, such that people can relate with you. Look, the moment integrity is, mix, is missing in the mix, then believe me, there is no relationship. And once there is no relationship, a lot of things will happen. Uh, and I guess that each of us wants to belong to those class or category of employees or staff or managers that are described as effective is the challenge we have today and it must come to play going forward, especially now after COVID-19. Everybody's hand must be on deck and be seen to be relevant in there, not just being there. They want to see you perform because once you resume work fully, what is key is execution, getting things done. They don't, nobody wants to listen to excuses after all these weeks. It also means that you are preparing even while at home to make sure that your relevance at work is enhanced, not diminished. You don't want to go back and say, you know, there's no this, there's no that. Nobody wants excuses. Excuses is tantamount to failure. So it shouldn't come up even with a program like this that you have had the benefit of partaking in. And I hope that you will take that to heart as well. Now, <clears throat> looking at the scenario we have painted with respect to crisis and personal effectiveness, what we expect is that we will make a difference wherever we are. And how do you do that? There must be a plan in handling emergencies because we are talking of emergencies and that's the state we are all in now. Now, what plans have you put in place or have I put in place to make sure that when I get back fully to work, uh, I can move more swiftly than before, that I can prompt myself to doing things even before I am asked. And it is important to start doing some of them now because you have a week left. You understand? You want to show how capable and effective you are. And if they are the people that are usually called upon when situations get you know, a bit tough and difficult. So, if you don't, if you are not in that class, you need to be to make sure that you belong in there and take charge and make sure that you are effective. So if, if you are a, a, a manager of others, then you must know those whom you can rely on when the chips are down and action is called for. If you don't know them now, I think you have some time to reflect further before resumption so that those people must be managed differently, must be engaged fully so that the best they can offer, you know, uh, they can do it. If you don't engage
an effective people because it matters an effective person or what makes uh, personal effectiveness comprise of three components there is the the, the 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 feeling the what we call the affective and the emotional part which dictates your feeling the feeling in terms of attitude or disposition you display some of them are not don't, are doesn't come up overnight they are a cumulative of that part of you that has that has, um, that has been brought about by your upbringing, uh, situation around you, um, schools you have attended and all of that. There is also the behavioral part. And that is what we see. You don't see the attitude. It's below the radar. What is in a man's heart, you have no clue. What a man is capable of is not written on his face. But in terms of uh, what he does, and what he says, which is what I mean, I mean uh, behavior is all about. You will see it. Um, and that reflects as essentially the habit he or she has cultivated over time. Nobody knows, no, nobody thought, no, 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 no. How do I put this? Smoking is an habit some people cultivate. And with all due respect, I don't mean to be personal. Some cultivate the habit of drinking. You know, it's not, you, you, nobody, nobody taught you. You just pick it because you see friends doing that. But it becomes your habit. Some can't even do without it. Some must have a bottle or two a day. They are addicted already. Now, but you can undo those things. That's the beauty of life. When you and I were born, we, we, we came like a blank check and everything written in there is uh, is from the environment, our parents, our friends, and just mention it. The society itself, and we can unlearn it. So I'm saying that there is hope at the end of the of, of the tunnel. So whatever habits you have, and you know them, those of them that are not uh, that are not in congruence with personal effectiveness, you need to discard them because this age calls for those who can do, not those who can uh, promise and not deliver. Then the third part, which is key, has to do with the cognitive uh, part of it. And it has to do with knowledge, the information you have, the experience you have picked in the course of time. The knowledge is a reflection of your education, your interest. Some people love reading. They accumulate more. Uh, information at your disposal at any point in time can influence a lot of things that you do and say. Um, these are components. We all have it. We have a measure of them. And I, I think one of the rationale behind this program is for you to think back and see which of those things in you can mitigate or um, impact your progress personally or negatively, and then start to work against them. It's all about you. There's nothing a man can't do if he puts his heart to it. Now, how does personal effectiveness affect your decision because Life is about decision. It's a decision to be at this forum today. You could jolly well stay home or um, be amongst your family because I reckon most of us are at home now. And uh, do whatever. Or you have chosen to give the next one or two hours to learning. So it's a choice. And it, that it's informed by your decision to make it, to do it. And you are very much welcome to, uh, like I said, it's a pleasure to be in your midst. But every decision carries some risk and uncertainty. You could come in here and find something useful to, to take home, or it could also be the flip side. It could be so boring, so irritating, so unnecessary. In fact, sometimes you feel that, why the hell were you invited to this? And I hope this won't be one of those. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and the idea now is for you and I to know that with all those risks, I mean, abounding, you still must take some decision. In fact, if you don't take decision, you have already taken a decision uh, indirectly. That is not planning, not taking, not deciding what to do next is already a decision in itself. Now, your education, your experience will generally enhance the quality of decision taking. There is no doubt about it. If, if in the course of today, you are, there, there is, we are going to dive deeper into what decision making is all about, and you see the intricacies in there, uh, hoping that it will, it will sharpen the quality 
or, or the way you make decision you know, going forward. Your attitude and disposition as, as well affect, affect um, your decision, the quality of your decision. That's what we are talking about. There are decisions and there are decisions. Some are so fickle, some make so much sense that they are so attractive, you just want to run with them almost immediately. Some, you look at them with a great deal of skepticism. So decision that will arrest attention, decision that will impact life and whatever it is that you are doing yourself makes a lot of difference between you and those who can't make such decision. If you are a self-starter, one that takes initiative and start doing things, that is somebody that can drive in himself. Hopefully you will do something, a lot of things better than the one that wants to be driven. He's complacent, he's seated in the same place and doesn't see need to make some difference where he is. The quality of those decisions will be different than the two, irrespective of the experience. The experience of a complacent person doesn't even rub off what some of the things they do because generally he has to be pushed, kicked to move. I hope you get the point I'm, 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 I'm trying to drum home. Now, there is a difference between a doer, the decision a doer will make because he wants to get to doing things, he's willing. He moves on to say, okay, look, I have to do this. He propels himself, he drives himself. So his decision will be different from the kind of person that is, um, is all mouth. He can promise heaven and earth and deliver nothing. That is the, 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 the impact of uh, our makeup on decision we make. Now, one of the key things that makes an organization to be called organization is that they are organized. When we talk about being organized, it means that they put things in perspective. They, they plan. They are anticipatory. They are proactive. They don't operate with a knee-jerk reaction, except you have crisis. So that means that that planning that I've broached is key. We must plan and prepare for crisis. Even though this is not our main thrust today, but the point is that if we don't plan, we have already planned to fail. And some crisis can take many people or even organization by surprise. Look at how the mighty are falling. U.S. is a victim of poor planning, if, if, if it has to be said, concerning coronavirus that they are battling with now. The lives of China obviously have and are prepared. They have a plan in place and have gotten people, you know, they prepare for emergencies. And so they could respond promptly and arrest it before it got out of hand. The, the flip side is what you are seeing in the US. And it starts by identifying key, key officers that can be saddled with responsibility when you, when, when you have the unexpected on ground. So every, if, 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 if the unexpected is not quickly uh, tamed, like we have mentioned, business will be jeopardized. It will affect, in fact, some organizations now probably can't pay the salary for the month of, uh, I'm not sure they have, if they have managed to pay March, probably can pay the one of, uh, I mean, of April, or pay it in part. So if, if crisis comes and you can't respond quickly, then there will be challenges of the likes that we have mentioned. So it's a key management responsibility. And for those of us that are in management positions now, it's a clarion call to wake up. When you get back to office, get a good plan on ground. Choose men, capable men, proven men that can get things done when the chips are down, who can think quick on their feet and get things happen, to make, to make things happen. Get them on full so that you can move quickly uh, to arrest the situation. I'm trying to, to work with time, and I know right. it's tough. Right, uh, right, right, right. Now, what to expect in crisis? Crisis means abnormality, if you like. And so it's a period where you have to change roles. Roles will change. You can't keep doing the same thing 
that you've been doing. You can't, you are not, you are even incapacitated to do that. So your roles will change, your responsibilities will change, your priority as a leader. I'm sure the priority of your organization has changed now. Ask the leaders, and some of them are, uh, are, are, are listening as well. You are no longer chasing profits. What you are trying to make sure is that you don't, you, 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 you handle the post no differently. That there are no unnecessary expenses at this time, if you understand what I'm saying. So a lot of, change, a lot of things changes dramatically. And that's why I said earlier that at a time like this, or in times of crisis, we are talking about being in that self-preservation mode. It has to be self-preservation first, so that you can see tomorrow and bounce back to make tomorrow a more successful one than, than other days. So what we are saying is that when crisis comes up, leaders will start navigating uncharted waters with a lot of learning. In fact, it's like operating and learning at the same time because you don't have time to go and start reading or learning. What you meet on the way, you must take care of it. You must de deal with it in the best way you can because look, the information is not available. You don't even know the facts. So the major thing is to use your instincts that have been sharpened over time through experience to navigate those stormy waters that you meet along the way. So surely new ways of operating must be promptly found and cultivated. That is um, the next step. You must find new ways. As you move forward, as you try to overcome the challenges or stem it, you must find new ways to operate. And we are saying here categorically that all the above calls for leaders with known track of being effective and pragmatic. If you are, if you are not in that fold, this is another call to join that fold. This is another call to join that fold. And I believe we have it in us. And we just have to open up the giant in us. We, can't, we must stop being a dwarf. Live up to being the giant that you are made to be. Be effective. Be effective. You need to stand out. You need to take risks. You need to take decisions to do things other than procrastinating and all that. I'm not accusing us. I'm only challenging us. Absolutely. Now, what do we do in crisis? And we are gradually rounding up. There are four behaviors that we must exhibit as individuals and in our teams. And one of them is that we must learn to decide with speed over precision. You know, when you have luxury of time, you can do some brainstorming and all of that and all of that. And take all. in crisis situation, you don't have that. You have to take decision quickly because you are contending with a lot of uh, variables that you know very little about. Information will be uh, concerning the issues are, are limited. You can imagine how it is with us in Nigeria when COVID comes up. We don't, in fact, there are so many information that become, can be confusing. You, if, you just don't, if you don't read just a few and take your decision, you will be in a state of, uh, 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 or in a frozen state, like, more like, when you are still trying to gather information and you are already a victim of it. So we must, we must decide with speed. If this is a time when you look for the good and you are not thinking about the best at that point in time. The good in the situation is what you are looking for and run with, and you will get there. You need to adapt boldly. We have mentioned that roles will change, responsibility will change, priority will change when crisis comes up. And as it changes, you must take the ones that comes up, you know, with both hands. You must take them with both hands because that is what is called for. You must, the, 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 the situation you have and you can run with must suit the purpose. Do you, do you get what we are saying? It must be suit for the purpose. The purpose is unpredictable. It's not the one that you are familiar with. So you have to adapt to that and run with it. For instance, um, we have talked about being in that, I mean, survival mode. Survival mode is, is, is instinctive. It's instinctive and it has to be, uh, it's, it has to come out of, out of us. 
us when, when, when we are challenged. Um, but what is important is that we must move swiftly and deal with people that are on ground, people who are there, who are available at that point in time and make the most of the situation. How do you deliver relief, I mean, reliably? What we are saying is that there is an expectation of the team that were handling the crisis. If you are in, if you are in there, you must take over the driving, I mean, the driver's seat, if you understand what I'm saying, and make sure that, yes, you keep focus. On the driver's seat, you, you can't be sleeping, you can't be distracted. You must ensure that the, even the vehicle itself, that is as, as whatever state it is, can keep moving. And so you have to deliver, you have to bring about changes that, uh, that is desired at that point in time. Um, it is not a time that you are distracted. It is never such a time. There must be that, I mean, that you must be in that mood to bring about the, some changes, some improvement in the status quo. You have arrested it, which is the first step. Then how do you get out of the mess or the, or, 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 or the, or the swamp, so to say? Of course, you have to engage for impact. You need people to do this. There, this is not uh, a one man sport. You are working with people in crisis. There are other people in there of different cadre and level, but they have their own role to play. How do you engage them? We talked about connection the other time as an effective person. It means that you must be concerned about their well-being, for instance. It means that you must praise them when the need arises. It means that you must um, care about uh, their states at all times, including their families, wherever they may be so that there is a link to ensure that their mind is fully on that job at hand in that critical period, and the results can be delivered, you know, as expected. Now, some of this prescription, like I've mentioned here, fits the personnel of an effective person, men and women, and some of you out there uh, fits that, uh, that description. You can do it, I, I am confident. We are in a situation that which has become shoved. And so going back to work is not like your old self. You must, if, if you like that phrase, be born again, you must be different. The one that is driven now to make a difference in each of, in, in whatever situation, whatever patch of the, of, the, of the whole that you have been given to operate. That difference must start from the way you think and then reflect in what you do from today onward. That is our expectation for you uh, making this class. Finally, by way of summary, um, we are looking at the topic again, personal effectiveness in times of crisis. And we have mentioned that crisis is unpredictable, but it is not unexpected. So it's a reality we have to contend with. It's unpredictable. We don't know when it will not happen, but it will happen one way or the other. So the only way is for us, you and I, to be prepared for it with, with, the, with the determination to manage it when it occurs and manage it effectively. And we emphasize that we need to get a team of effective leaders in place. We must identify them. We must train them accordingly so that they can they can be fit for the situation we are looking at or envisaging in case it happens, what you call the unexpected. They must be trained for the unexpected so that they can take care of it um, when it happens. The idea is to reduce or mitigate the impact of the unexpected on all stakeholders, the staff, the customers, the suppliers, even the government that you pay taxes for, you know they have expectation. And that's why we are emphasizing below that some investment in training and coaching is required. It is required, it is necessary. The common saying is that if you don't train them, you can't blame them. If you don't see crisis coming and prepare for it and train and develop people to cope with it or manage it when it comes up, um, I dare say that the management is lacking. And I, I know for sure, by the time 
we have more information access to more information of some companies you will see those who are slack and those who are proactive we are talking about business continuity here business is is, is started not with the hope of getting it crashed somewhere along the line the idea is that it must be or remain a going concern it must be growing in leaps and bounds sometimes it can remain on the same spot but it has the chances or the chance of bouncing back to regain its prominent position. So whatever it is, these few things must be at the back of our mind uh, and that we must try as individuals to be more effective than before because that is what will become the new normal. It's, you can't go back to doing things the same way you've been doing it. The last couple of weeks has, uh, has dealt many organizations what we call a terrible blow, and they need to recover from it quickly. You are the one, you listening here are the ones that will go and make the difference because you have to be more effective than before. And I hope that you won't fail, you won't fail yourself, you won't fail those of us that have gathered to put this for you, and um, you won't fail your family as well and your organization. I must thank you for your rapt attention. And I look forward to answering some of your queries or questions or comments uh, in a few moments. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shiji. Uh, that was a wonderful one. And I'm sure, or I can assure you that uh, uh, we all have gathered or gained one or two things from that that I believe will um, form you know, part of our, you know, the decision making of evaluation as we move forward at this period. Now we will still have to discuss further, you know, what you have presented. But before we do that, uh, before we do that, uh, I will want us to quickly, you know, just discuss on the next uh, paper, and then we will come back to you know, tie it all together, you know, so that we could have a robust uh, interaction, and then uh, everybody can also contribute. Uh, but one thing I want to emphasize, you know, in what he has uh, discussed or presented is that uh, this is more of a more, more personalized, you know, for us as individuals. It's more direct to us as people. It's more, you know, uh, a direct approach. But like like to put it one on one, you know, as it were. It's talking about the individual effectiveness now. Okay, in organization, people, I mean, made up the organization. So you as an individual, you as a team player, have a role to play in the mix of all of the you know, activity of the business. And one thing that you must understand, especially at this period, the possibility is that uh, we feel we are in lockdown. Uh, we feel we are not too much, I mean, we're not so engaged in the things we do, maybe for our company or individually or for our business. And then there's that uh, possibility to begin to feel like, I have a, a number of, I mean, a lot of time, you know, where uh, uh, that, I mean, perhaps the, uh, I do, I do, I do time, and then you feel, uh, I mean, there's time. And you also believe that by the time you're going to resume back, uh, the possibility is that your company will, of course, will notify you that uh, everybody should resume back now. So you probably may feel then that when you are ready, you know, to now begin to really, uh, analyze or perhaps look at what it is that will be required of you or what it is that will be demanded of you. Uh, what we are saying here is that right now that you, you have them, that you have that time, you have that ID time, you have that, you know, uh, undemanded period or engaging time for you, this is the time to begin to, you know, reevaluate things. Because the truth is, like I said, people is that this has changed. It's not as if things will change, this has actually changed. Okay, so because this has changed, they require new fundamentals. You know, uh, like I emphasized at some previous classes, I look, one thing that is constant here yeah, is change, and we have change with us. And I recommend that if you have not read that book, uh, Who Move My Cheese, you may want to take advantage of that book and read that again to, be able to have some more insight into change. So one thing that I assured here is that there's a lot of change, changes going right on now, and then you don't want to be left behind. And that is why the place of your own personal effectiveness. The company as a whole, the venture as a whole, are making some strategic fundamental decisions as we speak. Okay, so you as a team player, as a member of the organization, must be very strategic too in your whole effectiveness on the things you are going to bring on board because the whole lot will be demanded or the demand of you in the new phase, the new normal. 
you know, uh, and that is why we are, you know, discussing this. Like, like I also mentioned to people, I think one of the things that this pandemic, this challenge is going to turn at us is that the possibility that we may never shake hands again. I may not have to shake your hands again forever. You know why? Because we may be practicing this for the next one or two months. Okay, so if you're going to be practicing this in one or two months, making about three months altogether, or even not more than that, okay, the possibility is that we now become, I mean, we get used to it, and then we don't shake again. So what that means, things are going to change. There will be new normal. Okay, so there are things you do before now, before the pandemic, that by the time the, 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 food, I mean, the food operation comes to place, there may be a lot of, it's possibly even changing role, swapping assignments. You know, your KPI is possibly to, going to be totally different now because we are now in a new phase. Things are changing and moving at a fast pace, rapidly, globally. Okay, so because of that, you begin to now look at what's going to be your relevance. It's about you first. What's going to be your relevance in the new scheme of things? How can we be effective? Some of us are, are afraid that we might lose our job. So why should you think you lose your job? Why don't you think that you have more responsibility or have more challenge? And at this time, you need to really you know, be able to prove to the organization that whatever value we have placed on you was the why. Okay, so, and that is the essence of you now being able to rediscover yourself and see how you can be relevant to the system, how you can bring new initiatives to the system, how you can even be the, the catalyst for the solution of this problem, even within your own system, within your own organization. Because for whatever sector we play for now, okay, because okay, I know some people are from pharmaceutical sector, health sector. Now, this season is bringing about a lot of new you know, challenge to you all together. So, and the truth is that they are also bringing, some also bringing up a lot of opportunities, especially for your sector. And same thing for the ICT sector, you know, it's bringing a lot of new opportunity. Because one of the things that may likely happen now, from here on, is that we may even have to have people working from home, perhaps as a part of your new assignment, or perhaps with alternative. Some set of people work today physically at the physical structure, some work from home. Okay, so if that's a new phase of things, then what are the things that we need to do? If the ICT sector now needs to have more, you know, they need not to do more about more new innovations or new ideas, which, what are you thinking about now? What idea can you give to your organization a part of your own timing now that you have a lot of time for yourself to think, to ruminate, to back idea? What are the things we are doing right now? And so these are the things we are talking about being effective. You don't just want to wait to say, as it is announced that, look, uh, now we will be able to put the pandemic under control, so everybody should resume back to work on Monday. And then you get to back to work on Monday and say, okay, so what's the boss thing? Uh, what's the organization saying? You don't want to be part of those set of people. You want to hit the ground running. You know what you are doing before this challenge. You know what this challenge has posed to your organization. And as a team player, so what idea are you bringing on board right now, even while you are home? And by the time you are going to resume fully back, have you begin to analyze what is the place of your company, your organization? What's the place of your department? What's the place of your own section? In all of this, how can you add more value to your organization? You know, one of the things I said to people is that I hope we won't have people that will, like, uh, I have a pending leave that I've already scheduled for, for May. So the moment we resume, I'll just go on leave. I, I think we won't have certain kind of stuff for people like that, yeah. And the next thing you're thinking is that uh, I'm people going to leave in May. So whether they like it or not. So I don't think you should be part of anybody's thinking now. Because whatever well, it is, the organization have their different ideas. But the truth is that I think, like I said earlier, you person will say, you are, you are you know, you are a smelly house. For me, for, for me, for instance, I think all my backlog of sleep, I've done it now. So I don't think I have any outstanding sleep now. All right. So I just want to get going. I just want to get, you know, moving. So I just need the, the, I need the economy to be opened up so that we can just go back and bring new initiative, new solutions. Okay, so what we are saying is that see yourself as a solution center. And by the time you see yourself that way, you see yourself as very essential to the strategic decision of the organization moving forward right from here. So you need to think within your industry, think beyond your industry. Think at the larger scale of what is going to happen for your business continuity. What are the roles you need to play if you are heading a department, what is the role of your department in the, all of the effectiveness of your organization? Because the effectiveness of an individual, we hand up to the effectiveness of the section of the department 
And then we hand off to the effectiveness of our overall organization. So if you, feel, you see yourself as inconsequential, then it's good. You know, like I also said to people, you know, you may, you may come with the idea and say, look, you know what? Uh, we are three in my department. So if I don't go to work, the one will be done. Oh, that's fantastic. That's giving us an idea that you are actually not relevant. So if that's your thinking, then it's good for us. By the time we want to start downsizing, then we will as well as taking you away. That's just it. But people don't know. You know, some of the things you say or you do, or in fact, of your action or inaction, making some suggestion. All right, so at this period, everybody must be part of moving forward strategy. You don't want to be labored. Yeah, you are tired. Yes, you are like, what's happening? Uh, you know, because the truth is that, the reality is that a whole lot of us are actually tired of staying at home because we don't have anywhere to go. All right? It's not because that the company is not operating, but it's not because we are tired at home. So if they say today there should be movement, but organizations should not work, I'm telling you, some people will still be happy. But what we are saying here is that you've gotten a job, you have where you earn your living, you are part of a system. All right, so what are the, you don't wait for the MD to, to think alone. You don't wait for the top management to come and give you the idea alone. You should be able to, on your own path. And again, these are part of the things that also could help you by what? Upscaling your skill, learning new things, exposing yourself to more fundamental things. They can add value to you because it's, it's about you and your relevance in this system, and then such that your organization can have you know benefit you know from that system. Okay, all right. So uh, let me just drop it at that, and uh, uh, maybe we'll just take uh, some reactions now. Okay, and then we can get going. Okay, so if you have any uh, contribution or question, uh, you can either drop it in the chat room or raise your hand. Uh, if I unmute, I will unmute your mic when I see your hand. But if I unmute everybody now, that will be too noisy. So if you have any question or any response or contribution to this discussion, you can then raise your hand. Or you have a peculiar, you know, uh, challenge you want us to address as such what we have discussed here or your organization that we can look at that. All right, so do I have people that are ready to talk? If I see your hand or you make your comment in the comment section, then I can fix that. Okay. All right, so uh, let's have that. Okay, so uh, while we are waiting for that, I don't know, um, because I want us to really manage the time and see what we can do about this. Okay, uh, I have a GBO. All right, you, can, you are on now. I think your mic is muted now. Is it still there? Yeah, you can speak your mic if you want to. Right. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. GBO, go ahead. Yeah, you, you are far from your, your mic or phone or something. So can't hear you very well. It's very faint. I'm not sure I, I can hear you. So you have to move close to your mic. Very faint. Hello? There is Mike raising his hand. Mike, uh, Mike uh, raising your hand. Okay. Uh, Okay, raise your hand again. Okay, uh, Samuel. Samuel, you can speak. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yeah, I most sincerely appreciate your efforts in putting this together. And uh, like I said in the chat that I sent, this sorry, is the moment sorry, of truth. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Tell us your name and the, your company you represent or something so we can just talk about it. Okay, my, my name is Samuel WC. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm from Totec Engineering Limited. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, like I said, uh, I said this is quite uh, awesome, uh, and it's, uh, it's the moment of truth. Like I did send in my chat that I sent earlier, uh, because a few days ago, uh, one of our directors posted something 
on a platform different from uh, distant. And it's just something that, that put me thinking that uh, uh, we should begin to think of post uh, COVID era. Now, what happens? And ever since that day, I've been ruminating and thinking over what should we do. And that's in agreement with what the regulator have said this morning. A lot of things are going to change when we resume. There will be a new dimension, there will be new ways of doing things. And this, this is a, a moment we need to reflect on how we do things and uh, strategize and be proactive enough in delivering our responsibilities as a person or as a manager. I, like I said, I sincerely want to appreciate you. And uh, more importantly, I would like to know if the material as shared by the facilitator uh, is something we can get because it's not everything we can write down uh, as the as the the program was going on. So I will appreciate if we can get a sort of that uh, that uh, uh, item. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll see, uh, you will get yeah, Odebi, sorry. Odebi, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Odebi. You yes. will get the material after the class. We will get make it available to everyone. Thank, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you. All right. Very uh, much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moji Sola, you can go ahead. Yeah, Thank you now. very much. Thank yeah, you very yes. much. You're welcome. Please, um, I like the I like Mr. Lubumi to um talk more on the three components of makeup of personal effectiveness. Okay, all right. Okay, it's listening. All right. Mr. Shiji. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We 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 mentioned that to be effective. Maybe I should put the slides to help. Thank you, sir. We talked about one, your knowledge, your or the information you have uh, at your disposal. Um, we went to school, so we learned some things. We've been working in the organization, so we know some other things, some information that brings and um, peculiars uh, that are peculiar to the organization that we we run with. We also know that um, uh, how do you call it? Um, from the experience we've had, we also have some, some things to deliver. I mean, we know some things about uh, X and Y, as the case may be. So all of these will impact whatever decision or role we, we, we play in, the, in, the, in life as a person. But aside of that, there is this behavior uh, aspect of, of it that um, affects what we pick up and will affect what we do. What are the habits that you have? If you are a procrastinator, I think it's, it's only, it only makes sense now that you can't afford to be that anymore. There are people who will know what to do, but they don't get to doing it because they keep postponing it. And so they will be naturally ineffective. And in terms of taking decision, they will also be a failure. Now, the idea is to rouse us up. And the emotional parts, we, 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 are, we have what you call attitude that are deep-seated, you know, already there because they have been formed over years. Some people know can help you in a situation, but they won't do it because they want to take the, 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 the credit. It's, it's an attitude. Some are willing to give you a helping hand anytime. time. You don't even have to ask them before they, they volunteer. That is a reflection of attitude. And it takes a while to unpack that because it's, it's deep-seated, if you understand what I'm saying. They have, they, it's a accumulation of many years. But they are not static. You can break them. It all depends on your personal will the, the, that you have to, to make that difference. So those are the three things. I hope it makes more sense. That your attitude, your disposition to things, are you disposed to working? Are you disposed to working with a team or you are a lone ranger? You understand what I'm saying? If you are disposed to that, this is not the time for it. You are in a crisis mode. You, you have to join the team and put your idea forward convincingly so that it can be bought. If you are the reluctant one, the shy one that stays at the back, your relevance or the ideas you have will not be seen. And so it will be lost and it will not make impact on the organization where you are. So those are things that are in there. The habits you have cultivated it could be in terms of, for instance, um, bringing ideas from even every sources to, on the table so that it can help to make decisions. Then deploy it. If you know it, use it. If you have it, share it. Those are what we are saying 
or th those are what those components affect in, in what we do. If, I hope this little bit has helped somewhat. Okay, uh, okay, let's have uh, Akman. Akman Blessing, okay, you, can, you are on now. You can make your comment, your question. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate this class. I've learned a lot. So my contribution actually is... Sorry, uh, your, the your name and uh, company, please. Okay, my name is Blessing Akman. I'm the CEO of World of Marketing and also the CEO of Inyene Agro an agricultural uh, business that is into processing, food That's processing. Good. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, right. Okay, so my company is into food processing. We process Gary, and we're trying to ensure there's food sufficiency in the country. Now, I, what I have seen so far is that this crisis has actually touched me in such a way that everything you've, you've taught us today, I can personally attest to the fact that I felt it all. I felt as if the whole world is against my business at this particular time. At the same time, I got to a point where I now realized that, okay, there's an opportunity here because the best time to prepare for a crisis is to start planning now. So I decided that, okay, we need to look at the food situation of things. When I realized food high, the price of food was increasing, so I told my staff that, come, we all have to, we are born for a time as this. So let's all get together and engage this whole crisis thing and ensure that they, we reduce the amount of food crisis we are having and prepare for the future. So my, I like the fact when you talked about what do we do in a crisis because we've come to a time of realization that we are actually in crisis. So what, what, what we did is that number four, when you said engage for impact. So when he made that statement, I realized that I'm actually doing something right <laughs> because I had to sit my staff. We talked over it. Where I tried to understand their pain point to see where we can address their issue because charity begins from home. So a lot of them, I even registered them in the primary health center. I worked with the community health center to see how I can help most of my staff get registered so that when they are sick, they have access, I pay bills. So when they see that, I'm interested in their own success. They come around and want to help, so help me grow my own vision of ensuring there is food sufficiency. So a lot of, the only solution to most of organizations is that it's not all about profit. You actually have to look inward and see how is this crisis also affecting my staff? That's the only way you can buy them in. That's the only way you can engage them for better impact to actually grow your vision. So understand putting the human face into their own situation, feeling their pain because we are all in it together and not just ignoring it and saying, oh, I'm the employer here. At my beck and call, they should show up. But the fact that you know you, you accept that we are all in crisis and then we look at how is it affecting them and I try to address their pain points. And really, they've been actually good because sincerely we've been producing our goods and now we are looking at supplying people and not the increased price, the actual price that we sell, so that a lot of people that are in crisis don't have money right now. So they're trying to be conservative. They're trying to have that self-preservation to ensure that they survive the situation. So why add more to them when we can actually be a solution provider? That's my, that's my comment. Thank you. That's a great testimony. Please keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah, so uh, do I have anybody raising my hand yet? Let me check so before we move on. Okay, Michael. Okay, all right, Michael. Michael, yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, good day, everyone. I, first of all, I want to appreciate the, uh, the organizers of this uh, forum. I think it's very, very educating. I want to thank uh, Mr. C.G. Yolumi for his presentation. Uh, especially, I want to appreciate the aspect when you mentioned communication. I, okay, my name is Michael and I represent AM Marketing and Logistics Limited, into Sales and Management Promotion. Now, I realized that um, one thing you said when you mentioned communication, I, I didn't know I was doing anything, anything right until when I spoke to two of my other colleagues of what we are going to miss, salaries and things. I, I thought they were going to get angry, but as I, I, I said, we understand. Everybody's facing it. 
So I think that's one of those good points there. But I have this question. You know, everybody's saying that life will not be the same after this um, period. Now, and what of, we belong to the business that try to look at solutions for the, uh, the clients, help them find solutions to their own problems. Now, what would they, I don't know what would be their thinking now. Even before this crisis, we have challenges in the, in the sector. Now, what would be the thinking of the customers now? Are they, will they be willing to say, okay, we are doing more into sales promotion, we are doing more into improving our sales, or using a third party or consultant to do their sales? Or do you think they will, be, they will shrink in and think we don't need all these things? And if that is the case or what the case, what is the best approach to manage this crisis after this all this uh, pandemic? That's my I will, question. I will start by saying that even your spirit is already talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you must be looking for solution. That is the, the whole thing is back on your laps. You must be looking for solution. How do you? It's like you rejigging your business. How can you make yourself more relevant? How can you add value to those organizations so that they don't dispose of you? Because every organization will have their thinking caps on now. They are looking mm. to business but effectively. Now, your, your responsibility is to repackage yourself or your organization so that your relevance is, 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 even, is key now more than ever. I hope you get my point. So put on all the different apps you know, thinking yep. and review your strategies, review, revive your organization. I mean, it, 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 you, can, you have to just change tactics. And that's why we said going forward, things will... Look, we are talking of change here. You can't keep doing this thing like you were doing before, before mid-March and start doing it again now. It won't work. There must be a new dimension you bring in there that makes it more attractive more adaptive than before. That is what they want to Different on board. So my, my brother, it is about thinking afresh, thinking deeply. When you when you seek, you will find. If you think, you will get the solution. They said that inconveniences and the fears that you have, which will intimidate you, you think about idea, new innovation or your organization. That is the state you are in now. For putting it up together, Lorash put on their thinking cap and said, they can help our clients. Because, um, the truth is that without our clients, we are not existing. We can't exist. You understand? Whatever, whatever as a salesman, you know, if there are no buyers, you don't have business. You are dead. I mean, literally. Um, I, I'm just putting, I'm emphasizing that for you to know that you must make sure retain your customers that is your priority and what will you retain them new ways profitable ways things different from that you've been doing and i'm sure if you put that thinking cap on uh, and you open your mind read look for some things and i mean something different so that you can come to terms with the new reality that is evolving okay let me uh, just let me uh, let me just add a few points okay you see uh, the truth is that uh, things are changing like i said earlier our business are going to rejig, and like he has emphasized, there will be priority. Company we have area of priority, and so fund will not just fly to everywhere. Perhaps they want. If, for example, you see Nigerian government already cut their budget, so it says a lot that there are some things that they have intended that will not come to limelight. So, so, so same for every organization now. There will be priorities. Okay, there will be re redefining of the business model. Okay, so for you two, you now need to sit down and look at. Okay, this is what I've been doing. Will it still be relevant for the, my clients, my organization, see our priority for this? If not, what can I evolve? What new idea can I evolve right now that can still you know, be close, perhaps close to what you are, you are doing, but can still be able to solve problems? So you should be thinking how to provide more solution right now to problems, because this is a time where we have many problems going to come around, or is around already, that now you need to look at what are the likely possibilities, or what are the solutions you can provide. So by the time you, like you said, Put on your thinking cap. I'm sure you'll also get, uh, you know, idea moving forward and perhaps get new idea that also you can leverage, you know, on. So that's that. Okay. Uh, let's have Olaolu, you know, Olaolu have uh, his raising hands. Okay, Olaolu. I think you are on now. Okay. Olaolu, you can go ahead now.
Hello, Lou, you can go ahead. I think you're on now. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Okay, go ahead. It's really, it has really helped me. I've gained a lot of food. I think your next one. So, for the wonderful presentation. Okay. Huh? It has been impactful. Oh, okay. Uh, so there are some few takeaways for me, which I really think is really helpful for me in my life. And uh, in terms of uh, when you mentioned communication and also. So, uh, uh, decision making with speed. Also, when he mentioned, he painted the scenario of, um, about attitude that uh, we, we are born blank, learn things that we have picked up. And then, uh, finally, uh, help us to grow in life and make us a better person, which is to my head. And after this uh, uh, pandemic, I want to say it's a, it's a wonderful job that you have done. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. Thank you for this training. Uh, may God bless you and uh, increase you. Uh, that's what I just want to want to say. All right. I, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have more questions, comments, or contribution? All right. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, what, what we do now is. Uh, I will just uh, do a touch point on uh, the next, uh, you know, paper. Since I put it there, the natural part is is infused into this what we have here. But since I've already listed it as part of what we will touch point, it's just going to be an extension of our discussion. Actually, not uh, a new thing, but it's going to be a bit more uh, focus on on us as manager or top level decision makers. All right. Like I said earlier, uh, this has focused more on individual. You know, having to be able to help your game as a person, as an individual, you know, as part of things you need to do moving on uh, to the next phase, you know, of your uh, effectiveness on your job. All right. So, uh, Mr. Shiji, let me just touch one or two points on the next paper for like 10 minutes and then we'll close it from there. Is that okay? okay. Very okay. well. Okay. So, let me, I will, I will share the screen from here and I hope it will. You could follow up from there, I think so. I hope I'm having the right thing. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I believe you can see the screen from here now. Okay. Okay, all right. So okay, all right. So um I will just touch, like I said, on what I call effective uh, Mandela decision making. And it's just an extension or a continuity to uh, what uh, Mr. Shiji has discussed with us. And then we'll just take it up from there. Okay. Essentially, you know, uh, for some of us that are, that are leader of team, uh, perhaps uh, occupying some position as manager, uh, this is a time, again, that, we, that the company or the organization will expect more you know, performance from us they will expect a, a little bit more from us and uh, uh, not just to see things like other staffs, you know, to see things more now like strategic with partners, okay? Uh, one of the things that I do for places I work is to see myself, one, uh, to go myself, is to go myself to that level I call consultant. Okay, so when I come as a consultant, it means that I become more perhaps an expert in, in problem solving, okay, on my job. I do not see myself as, just part of the team, I just ordinary staff. And I always put these two side by side when I talk about entrepreneur. I say for entrepreneur, they bring about the idea, they buy the idea, you know, they, they, they come up with the, the, the business idea or perhaps uh, uh, the main solution to a certain problem. Okay, so, uh, and they get, they get going, get thinking, we, you know, we're strategizing, we're planning how it gets work. And because, of course, yes, they can't do this job alone. They have to bring people on board to work with them in solving this problem. And that is why they, they get, they bring on, uh, you know, people that they feel that also have, you know, the skill, they require skill, they require experience to solve this problem. Okay, so in organization, I say that different set of staff, anyway, you may want to categorize them as staffs, 
or you know uh, employees of an organization. But there's a particular set of employees that I love that uh, I always recommend, and I think uh, for every one of us that it should be that it should be the level you know we really want to you know to get to or be when you talk about organization as it were. That should be the level an average person should, should see himself or herself. And that is the level I call uh, intrapreneurs. You know, intrapreneurs. So as an intrapreneur, as an employee, but you're an intrapreneur, you see yourself a bit closer to that entrepreneur. You do not see yourself as just an ordinary employee again, meaning that the difference between you and the uh, entrepreneur is that the entrepreneur back the idea or owns the idea. Now, your place, as an, when you get to that place, as an employee entrepreneur, is that you also have some fresh idea to corroborate the idea that's existing already. Now, so you don't just come to office, you just take, I mean, uh, come to place of work and just say, okay, this is what has been said. And we just, you, you, you also have some things to add on to uh, perhaps embellish the existing idea to get results. Okay, so, and that is the level for you as a manager should be. It should be someone that is more strategic in thinking to see how we can make the existing idea better and get results better and perhaps faster. And that's the level. So when, and I also say this too, when I said to people that look, the moment you are pronounced a manager in an organization, it's not about the, the what do you call it, the nomenclature. It's not about the, the designation. It's about you are now a manager to solve problems. Okay, so when you complain, each time you complain, ah, which one is this one? That is why you are there. You are expected to manage the problem and manage and even ensure that the solution that probably existing solution does not fail. So you are there as a manager, and so much will be expected of you. And so you have had to make decisions from time to time. You don't want to think like every other staff. You have to be more holistic and more strategic in the things you say and how you do things. Because again, you are leading a team. All right. So I will I will share with us uh, this uh, uh, slide, and then we'll look. So we'll say. What's the big deal about decision making? Now let's look at this. Okay, the blind man and the elephant. Okay, some of us are might be familiar with this, uh, you know, uh, uh, this what they call it, uh, analysis or something. All right. So we have four blind men, and they come across an elephant. Okay, and so they decide to feed the elephant to determine what sort of creature it is. Of course, remember they didn't know that it's an elephant. Okay, but you know now, right? But they don't know because they are blind. All right, they didn't know it's an elephant. So each of them had touched the elephant at different points. And so one touched the elephant at the leg. I said, this elephant says, an elephant is like a tree. He said, this is a tree. Because he has touched the leg of the elephant. Okay, so he's seen a tree. All right? Remember, okay, it's blind. So it's what he can feel that he's explaining to you. And the other man has touched the trunk of the elephant. I said, this is a snake. Okay, because he's touching the trunk. And he said, this is a snake. This is just a snake we are talking about here. Okay, all right, so the next person, Okay, touch the elephant and say, this is a rope, because you have touched what? The tail of the elephant. Say, this is a rope, all right? Remember, they have had to tell us what it is that is standing before them. And because they are blind, all right, they are seen from their blind spots, as it were, as a manager, or you are seen from, you know, different perspective. So what you are seeing is what you are saying, all right? And the fourth person say, this is a wall. You know why? Because it's touching a part, the side of the elephant. And say, this is a wall. Okay, so everybody is seen from different perspectives. And then the wise man, you know, perhaps someone that he has had to advocate or to have to, you know, they eventually assess their, their results, say that all of you, you are right, you know, because why? It is the angle at which you have looked at the issue that made you to conclude this is what it is. And if you take this down, at the beginning of COVID-19, you know, a lot of uh, information came and they said that, oh, this is just like a malaria issue, this is just like this. In fact, in Africa, especially in Nigeria, we said this is chronic malaria. You know, because we felt, because we are perhaps used to malaria. Okay, so we said this COVID-19 is a chronic malaria. And then if you see on social media, some people have given so many prescriptions. Some are, I mean, one of some of them is that you cover your head, put hot water, your nose, you know, all sorts of solutions have come up because that is the, that's what people can feel. That's what people can see. Okay, so as manager, occasionally, if not all of the time, when situation comes like this, and we are faced with challenges like this, especially that of the pandemic, we then begin to see things differently for our organization. But we must make decisions. Because he's not trying to cry and say, hey, what shall we do? You are already at that spot that you must make decisions. Either for your business as an individual or as a part of a team, 
But you are heading a team, all right? You are about to make decision to get the business going. You are about to make decision to get your, your, your co-worker, your subordinate going. You are about to make decision to get your business moving. There must be continuity after now. And then from all that going on, even in the world, from the news you are reading, either from CNN or what have you, you know, every nation is struggling. Just yesterday, we were announced in Nigeria that we now have to do massive testing. Okay? That took a while. You know why? It took a while because there are some other things that must be be in place. Before we can embark on massive testing, it took a while. You know, I, I was listening to CNN and I saw the governor of New York complaining lamenting. At the beginning of this, you know, when they were getting eaten seriously by this, you know, uh, crisis. And the guy was crying and saying, the president is saying politics. He should remove the ventilator. What can I, how can, how can I wait for three months for me to get ventilator? I need ventilator now. Open the storehouse. Bring it back. And the president was like, it hasn't got to that, you know. Everybody is on the hotspot, and you have to make decisions as a manager. All right? So you don't want to wait till when the, the chips is finally wrecked. Okay? The chips may be down now, but the possibility is that it can still work. So what decision are you then going to make? So let's just go in. So I have said decisions are choices you made from two or more alternatives. All right? So because there are always be different alternatives, there are always be different issues. Okay, we, we, we have the governors have to come to the decision. Should we lock down entirely? Should we just do restriction, restrictions of movement? Should we just have to, you know, do... To, so if you are going to lock down, what are the things? You know, there are decisions you must make. And these are, sometimes we call it on sport. You know, these are decisions that uh, you have to make decisions. And you can't go to bad drawing board, like Mr. Shiji said. You can't go to drawing board and say, Let, let's not begin to extrapolate or interpolate. No, there's no room. This is facing you. All right, this is eating you. And, I mean, you have seen in the past that you wake up in the morning and you see your company name in the news for the bad reason. And then you are wrapped me with, I mean, wrapped you with what we do. As a manager, then you must make decisions. Okay, and one thing you must know is that, and that's what we have tried to discuss when he touched on if your effectiveness. Because some of the decisions you are going to make are also part of the things you have, how much of investment you have made in yourself, how much of development you have embarked on. And more importantly, if you work in an organization, I always tell people, okay, you work in an organization that you do not understand everything about that business. There's no much of effectiveness you can have. Because why? All you do there is that, look, uh, this is where I am now. Uh, it's not where I want to be. And uh, so uh, let me just be winding away time. I'm looking for a better job. What better job are you looking for? What better job are you looking for? Because the truth is this. For everyone that has gotten a better opportunity to move or change career, there is a demand for what for their for that performance, and you can only get the best of any. If you have to change your job at all, you can only get the best from wherever based on your existing or your present performance, your present output. All right. So if you are not doing the very best right now, and then you think it's by moving to the next organization or moving to the next place that you can get the best, I can tell you for free that you probably be saving yourself. You can only get the best when you release your best right now. Where you are now, how, or how much of effectiveness is your impact in where you are now? Because that's what see. And what you must know is that your current employer, your current business sees that. And then for all you care, your competition sees that. Okay, I will share this with you that uh, one of our clients told us sometimes, I mean, some few years ago, I said, it's a particular guy in this organization that they want to get him over at all costs. I mean, Mikey, I said, at all costs. He said, because why? This guy is giving a, a, a brand a very tough time and is delivering for that organization. So they want to poach him. Okay, and I said to myself, if this guy is not performing where he is now, so who wants to look for him? All right, so you think you are a manager now. I think you are not satisfied where you are. So I now will ask you, how much of effectiveness do you have right now where you are? How much of your decisions and has imparted that organization? Okay, all right. So I'll come back to the full story, you know, that particular guy as you go on. So your decision-making process is a set of steps that includes evaluating decisions' effectiveness. A problem in this is a discrepancy between the existing and the desired state. All right, so we have had to make decisions. For instance, now, uh, some country already are looking at post-pandemic. And I can tell you for free in Nigeria, we are still looking at how even to, even to, to, to stabilize right now, even in this pandemic. So nobody is looking now to post-pandemic, except for strategic organizations. And that's what Mr. Shiji has discussed. For you as an individual, your effectiveness should be 
not only right now, should be post-pandemic. We're already in the crisis. So what should happen after that? When the company open up, when everybody is back to work, what should happen? And that should be the thinking of a serious-minded manager that is effective. What will what be, what be, what be the new order? What will be the new normal? It's not when we get back on work that we not start to rattle and struggle with situation. So your significance of your decision making are very essential, and it's one that's pretty distinctive characteristic of manager. So for you to really be an, a, a, an effective manager, to really be someone that your, you 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 are valued, and your company can place more value on you, then you must be able to be part somebody that's making, I mean, making great impact. You know, and it's being effective, and it's effective. Or whatever you do. So your decision made by top manager committed to total organization towards particular course. Okay, again, you know, we started this discussion from the point of an individual and your effectiveness. Okay, so this, uh, this plays a significant role when you are effective as an individual and then you play in a team, you are part of an organization because your impact of your effectiveness will be felt in the organization, which is going to rub on, on total course of action of that organization. All right, so if you are not effective as an individual, even when you have an effective team, you will be singled out, it will, you will be exposed to the fact that you are not effective. You will be, you'll be exposed. You know, and that is when some, some people get to the point to say that uh, I'm not loved in that organization. They discriminate in that organization. Then you bring about the tribal sentiment, they are full of Igbos, they are Yorubas, they are Hausas. Because why? On your home, you are not even effective. No, see, I'm not discussing the place that we could have some what are, some political issues, you know, what you call politics in, in, in organizations. Or perhaps I like to put it as some uh, diplomacy challenge, even, you know. But the fact is that if you are effective as a person, no matter to what extent that organization is, you cannot be totally be seen as insignificant because you are hiding value. You are hiding value. You know, it's only when we have seen that or we have realized that on our whole, we are not too good and we can't even defend our job, then we want to put it at the doorstep of, uh, of I mean, of everybody that, or the company that, like, there's too much politics there. You know, I'm not loved here. I'm not welcome here. You know, I, I'll share my personal experience as we go on this, on this journey. So, so, right? so, okay. so the significance of decision-making also has to make what you do for the global level of the management and uh, implement the strategic decision of top management in the area, uh, operating area of the organization. What am I saying? Your, your decision as a team leader, as a manager, has a lot to do with what other of your followers do. Okay, I'll share this example. I have a friend that works with a bank, you know, and of course you know there are procedures, for instance, if you need to take money out of your account. Okay, so they have this particular very good customer that they manage, you know, by their superior, by the boss. Okay, and of course, the relationship might get to the point that you don't necessarily have to get your client or your customer in the bank, I mean, physically in the bank, to do some transaction based on perhaps uh, the history and the relationship of that individual with your bank or perhaps with your account officer. Okay, so each time this particular customer needs to get some volume of amount of money, he just reach out and probably send some notes, uh, and then that is, that is done. Now, the, the team members, the, the subordinate or the junior staff, this particular guy, we always query because it does go through some process, of course. So all of them in the that life cycle, we always say that some things are missing. And the guy will tell them, Look, don't worry, is my client or is my customer, and so uh, we can waive some things. They waive all of this based on the decision of the top guy until the point that a transaction was done and the client declined. Denied them, and then there was a problem, okay? The top guy, of course, was taken over by the company, by the organization. He faced the consequence. And I know if they, everybody that are part of that circle, the junior staff, is rubbed on all of them. Eventually, they all lost their job. Okay, so your decision, sometimes that you feel does not matter, it has its own multiplier effect on a whole lot of members of your team. So that is why it's very important for us to be very careful and be more strategic. You know, when we make decisions as manager, because the people that make decisions in organizations that even close up such organizations in the past. Because why? Either you are careless, either you, you are biased, okay, or you have not paid enough attention, you know, in that, you know, uh, in, in the decision process, you know, making that decision process. So let's, let's move on. Like I said, I just want to do this for 10 minutes. Okay. All right, so decision made by, okay, I've, I've done this, done this. 
Okay, so I said there's a model you can follow even in your decision making uh, process, even as manager or as team members. Why well, you can identify the problem, the existing problem. All right, what's the exact problem that need to be solved? Okay, then you set some managerial objectives that you want to use. I mean, that should guide your your solution because there must be objectives that you intend to achieve at the end of the day. So you must clarify it. And this is also important because if you do this, it means that everybody on the team can clearly understand what it is you want to achieve at the end of the day. Don't let it be too. Don't, don't let it be by by. Don't, don't let it be known to you alone. Let it be known to your team member. Let the solution. I mean, the problem has been identified. This is the problem you want to solve, and these are the objectives you want to achieve. You know, then, then we can then set up the different course of alternatives, like we've seen in the elephant description of the elephant by all of those blind people. Everybody will have alternatives. So, taking all of the suggestions, taking all of the all of the objectives. I mean, the ideas. All of the alternative solutions to this problem, taking all of them, document them, don't criticize, don't condemn. Because even in your team, there may be some people that naturally will not speak up. And they are probably maybe too silent. You know, some of them you call it uh, uh, introvert. You know, some of them, there are people that are not naturally outspoken. Taking all of those ideas, take it as all of the alternatives, and then take it on after the other to select. Because sometimes you come up with ideas or solutions that are totally not. Time, I mean, they're not time relevant. They are good. They are good alternative, but they are not relevant to what it is that we want to solve now. All right. So you may also be very mindful of that. I mean, then you look at it as a let the most, the most best alternative that is relevant to what it is we want to solve now. When you do that, and then you can move on, you know, to gathering some more uh, uh, feedback, and then be able to test your alternative, and then be able to start your implementation process. So. In decision making, I also said that you can follow these approaches. Number one, rational, rationality, describing descriptions that are consistent and value minimizing within specified constraints. Now, a lot of decisions will be taken right now because of this challenge pandemic we are facing. Okay, so people will look at how consistent and the value, the cost of even the decisions. Okay, so some organizations might begin to think of is it, is it the best alternative I mean, choice for us to lay off staff? To we swap role? Should we begin to look at, okay, some can, uh, you know, uh, we should reduce the salary? So many of the conditions we call, but we must be very mindful of, you know, the relevance of God. If, if, you, if, you, if you reduce number of staff, does it mean you won't be able to be doing as much as you have to do to meet up, you know, the, the demand of the market? Is it that a lot of decisions have to come on board? We must look at what best we can do at this, at this point. Okay, random rationality. So behaviors that is rational, rational within the parameters of a simplified model that capture the essence, essential feature of a model, all right? So that's again, focusing on, now we have different alternatives, okay? But we need to look at which one best fits right now. Which one can we work out later? Okay, so it may be a gradual solution uh, process you know, you may be, uh, I mean, you don't want to force it because you must be very sure. You don't want to make a decision right now and in 24 hours you change your decision. Like we have seen right now, you know, some uh, uh, areas. Okay, the president make a pronouncement that Lagos State, Ogun State, and Abuja be locked down. And then the, the, the Ogun State governor felt that Look, this is too, you know, too sudden. Okay, I need it to be moved by 24 hours or 48 hours. So as a corporate organization, you do want to make decisions, such kind of decisions. There must be a well thought out decision. All right, and then be careful about. So another one is intuition. Okay, an unconscious process of making decisions on the basis of experience and accumulated judgment. Like I said, this is a season that, for as it goes now, okay, as as it appears, as it happens, we need to probably take some steps. But you also must be careful, you know. But however, we must be able to make decisions because, like he said, not even making decisions is already a decision on its own. So you must make decisions. As a manager, a lot more is expected of you. A lot more is a fear of you, so you can't keep quiet. You can't shy away from the fact that, okay, uh, it can be done, or some people will do it. You must do it. So what are the things that you, uh, you, know, you need to do? Like you have exercise, uh, set up your managerial objective. You have said that as part of your this you need to put in place. You said search for alternatives, or right, the best alternative right now that is relevant to what we do. And the law of things has to take into that. These are the things I've itemized. I will read the slide so you can go through that. And then... All right, okay, we said this again. Let me just add it. Add some of the limit, limiting factors, you know, that will also be very challenging to acceptance of your idea or decisions you probably may want to make right now. 
even as it were now, why we go through some of these challenges, we need to look at legal challenges. There's a legal restriction. Okay. Um, somebody said that, okay, is it that by the time we are, we, we are resuming back to work, uh, the corporate organization may ask that uh, all of the staff should go and, 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 I mean, to give us their uh, medical certificate of corona, corona virus free, meaning that everybody should be subjected to going through tests for corona virus before you can resume back to work. Now, you need to look at legal implication of that. Under labor law, is that acceptable? For you to say, to demand that every of your staff go for the test? You know, so you don't want to make decisions that while you are trying to solve a problem, yes, you may have good reasons why you feel we need to test all our staff, all right? But you also need to be very mindful of legal implication because if your staff takes you up and, it's, it's leg, and your decision is illegal, then it may be another cost to your organization. All right. Okay. So we need to look at moral and ethical norms. Okay. All of that also take consideration, and then you take look at some other policies. Okay. Regulatory policies that you also have to factor into. Okay. All right. So again, we also emphasize that information can be incomplete. Okay. When you have to face some uncertainty and risk, of course there will be risk, but you can only limit the risk. But of course there will be some then ambiguous decision uh, information. We must be able to look at how we can simplify every information that comes to us right now. We must simplify it. We must simplify it, right? And then see how we can contain it to the point that, I mean, to the level that we, it can be workable, it can be translated. If you need to communicate to your staff, you don't want to come with the ambiguity or lots of information that so it will be too difficult for them to comprehend. There must be simplifying of all of those information so that they can comprehend and then you can get your solution, you know, on time. All right, so I also said that you can compare and evaluate your alternatives that we have mentioned earlier. You know, to then come up with just the best alternative. All right. Okay. So uh, let me. Okay. The, the art of choice. Okay. The choice is the combination of the process, not all of it. All right. The choices you are going to make at the end of the day, as part of you know, after you have, have, have sampled a lot of, or you have gathered a lot of alternatives, the choice eventually is going to be from what you you know have decided. I mean, from all of the uh, alternatives you have, and then the choice confronting decision maker with designing constraints. You know. Uh, when you get to this point, it plays a whole lot on the effectiveness of an individual. Having to use, you know, to be, to be able to discern. You see, I think it's a, a different board game altogether. It's a high level of and this is also, it's, it, it just rests on the level of exposure, level of information, level of experience that you gather over time, you know, for you to be able to use your designing, you know, uh, strength to perhaps face some situation or make decisions or something. Situation, it's rest, very rested or rest on that. Okay, the implementing decision. Decision successes is a function of decision quality and decision implementation. All right, we could have good ideas, we could make these good decisions, but if it's not properly and well channeled or implemented, that's a, going to be a catastrophe on its own. All right, so we must be very careful that every good decision must be well and thoroughly implemented. And there's a need for us also continuously check, as intermittently to check. Even before final, final conclusion or your implementation, you must be able to check all of those ideas. Test it. And every time I test those decisions, test those ideas and be sure that you're on the right path and then you can, you know, uh, be sure that you are not violating any regulatory decisions or law or you are not violating anybody's right of way, you know, even your decision making. All right, uh, I, I want to stop in one minute and I'm trying not to uh, you know, take our time so that we can have a few moments for this discussion. I mean, discussion. Okay, let me put it in my in some. Let me put this. I said there are three conditions that manager may face at decision maker: certainty, risk, and uncertainty. This is known to us. But again, we still have to make decision even when we are faced with all, all of that. Then there's decision style. You know that you can also adopt directive, the analytical, conceptual, and then behavioral. You can read more on all of this, and these are what we can, can help you. Yes, yes, sure. So uh, I will drop it this way because of time, and then uh, I, will, I will allow us to, you know, uh, discuss more for the next ten minutes. And we, we close the class because the class has to close by uh, twelve, you know. Uh, so that's it. Uh, uh, I'll drop it at that. So if you have any contribution, then we can come on board. Mr. Shiji, uh, I think I I close my hand there. So I... Yeah. Um... Thank you. I think it was uh, it's a loaded one and very, very complimentary to the earlier discussion. Um, the, 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 the owners of 
burden is on members now to extrapolate and uh, wrong with the one, wrong with it, <clears throat> disturbs it. And the point being made is that effectiveness comes down to taking decision and then follow up with the implementation. <clears throat> because even the best of decisions, when nothing happens, is just hanging in there. It's, all, it's tantamount to not taking a decision. So um, really, these things are interwoven. And the challenge is for, for everyone present, and even those of us listening, to know that there is a, a new sheriff in town, a new situation in town. And uh, we have to be on the side of doing, most importantly. And to do is to know what to do. In which case, decisions, hard decisions have to be taken. Um, you made very valid point at the beginning, talking about this sense, this, uh, this entrepreneurship thing. It is one of the major things lacking. If you are working in a place and you are not thinking like your boss, you are not, uh, you are not likely to go far. Within a short time, you must put on the cap of your boss and be seeing things from his perspective and do things that you will do if they call you tomorrow, even if it's not today. Such that if you work with that mindset, you're already an entrepreneur because you are thinking like an owner. And so it will be more effective naturally than <clears throat> any other way. So the challenge in taking decision is to see how will this be looked at by my contemporary? Will it add value? Will it make, will, does it make sense? Does it make, does, is it reasonable to run with? Is it practical or something beyond people's imagination? In which case, we have to sell and sell hard to get them to run with it. So decision making is what personal effectiveness is all about. The choices you make at every point in time is a difference. And you must be convinced it can work before you start running with it. Fortunately, most of us, practically everybody has a boss one way or the other that you can sound them on. Your thoughts must be sounded out. And after a stage, you, your boss will have total confidence in you that you do the right thing over time. Because he is there to mentor or coach, coach you to such an extent that you can deliver, even in his absence. If you don't have that kind of a boss, you better take more than you are already doing because you have to be in that situation. So decision making is key because it is, the, it is, it is on that pedestal or pedestal that you take the action or do what you have to do. But you must have decided that this is the best way to go. All we are saying is that you must be good at it. You must be very good at it. Such that what is not just something about hunches. It must make sense. You must find a sounding board that, that, collaborate, I mean, that agree with you. It could be your very close and effective person as well. Or it could indeed be your boss because you will carry the can at the end of the day. And the idea is to succeed together. It's not, it's, not, it's not an individual thing. We want to succeed together. All right. So um, we have uh, five more minutes. So if I have any questions or contributions, then we could go. Otherwise, we, we shut down now. All right. So ADBC, uh, online ADBC, yeah, go ahead. By each other. We started 10. We are really not by 12 now. Through, through uh, Zoom, like a Skype uh, app. So oh. we'll be done in the next 10, 15 minutes. So I'll call you back short. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking to us. <laughs> All right. So uh, do I have anyone having anything to say? Or... All right. So. OK, yeah, uh, go ahead. Right, who's that? Okay, bless him. I'm looking for. Okay, so uh, bless him, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. CG, you talked about um, resounding most of your ideas to your boss. Uh, 
for him to vet it before you get an approval to carry it out. Now, what the employer ideas, and most of this are into you after analyzing with the person, it shows that no, is not uh, fitting at that particular time to implement it. I have noticed that this particular staff's morale drops and kind of shies away to come back and share more ideas, but I keep encouraging. How do I manage that situation whereby staff still feel they can keep talking? I, I think it starts by acknowledging that they have made to the managers uh, oh. useless or hated. I thought you have finished. I said, I said, I believe it starts by acknowledging that he has made some efforts and it offers you an opportunity to, to coach him. You say, look, this is really good. You've made some good efforts. Then try and see there is always some good in whatever anybody offers. Pick that out and tell him that or her that this we will put to use under this situation or under this condition. Uh, you must encourage him to take some, uh, some uh, call it bravery or courage to come forth and give an idea to, to your, your, your superior because then you are saying you are thinking differently. So it must be welcome, it must be, it must be appreciated. It must also be encouraged by telling him that you are thinking already like me, I like that. Encourage him initially and that, look, what, what, what I think we need to do is look at it from this angle and look at it from that angle. Don't dismiss it, there is some sense, there is something good. There is, a, call it a, a nugget in there that you need to, 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 to uh, add to call it, that you need to brood she on. Don't like him, she don't know. Uh, you need to brood on so that uh, you can see the good in it. Don't be quick to dispose it to this. I mean, to, to dispose the fellow and say, "No, this won't, this won't work now." I'm saying be cautious in terms of uh, your response. Encourage it, and then later, uh, if if you don't have much, just encourage it first, and then tell him to give you time to look at it and think through it, and you may see some good things. Okay. Right, uh, Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Watsiu Salami, you are home now. <laughs> okay, sir. Yeah, can you hear me, sir? Go ahead, go ahead. Hello, okay, 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 yeah. Uh, this is a very uh, wonderful uh, training, so to say. Is your name and your mind? company, please. Okay, my name is Watsiu Salami from Top Tech Engineering, brand manager, Top Tech Engineering. Go ahead. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is a very uh, mind uh, reawakening uh, training, so to say. I must appreciate all the facilitators. Yes. Uh, my question, question is, is, yeah, looking at post COVID nineteen uh, situation, because one of the uh, elements that is affected mostly this time around is supply chain link. Um, supply chain link in the sense that, you know, as a brand manager, uh, also a marketer, a salesperson, you understand, if the supply chain link is weak or is broken, I have problem with my uh, client, so to say, you understand. And we can look at it from the angle of pricing, quality, and some other things. But then even the link itself, because the, the, the most of our suppliers are, are the European and, the, you know, Asian uh, people, you understand, these suppliers, and they are most affected by this uh, COVID-19, so to say, you understand. Then I, how do, how do we strike a balance between this supply chain link and, you know, making, you know, sales? Because it's a going concern. You know, you must drive profitability. Of course, you need to be very sensitive in doing that, so to say, you understand. So how do we do this? Because, you know, some of these, you know, clients of it, some of them will understand the real situation and they want to do business, and some will not even understand. They, don't, they will not have that understanding. For instance, like last week, I was a director told me that I should, you know, get the price of a particular product, you know, you understand. When I got it, the price was, you understand, you are getting like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. The current price is like 30,000 more than that, you know, and we have to do business. You understand? And we got another one, another price from another, you know, vendor or let me say supplier. And that was lower. You understand? But it doesn't have the product in now in stock. But the one with 30,000 more has the product in now. So what do we do? You know, we just have to, you know, move forward on this. Thank you. 
I think you will take your, you take that. Okay. Um, the, 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 the beauty of business, especially like the one you have described, is to plan ahead. The supply chain is key. And it's typical to have variety of them. Um, and so you have to leverage that. Sometimes um, you have to, you, you know, in every transaction, the profit margin or, or, or can't be the same. Some you, you, you milk the, the, the customer. In some cases, you just hardly break even. If you have that mentality, uh, it, it will come to play now when you get back. Some it is to retain them that you try and sell to them at very fair or low price or prices with very little margin on top. In some cases, like a giveaway product, I mean sale, that must also cost. You can't make every transaction profitable now, but you need to retain your customer. I always say this, and uh, with all due respect to the women in the house, a customer is like your spouse. Nobody in his right senses is for another 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 man or woman somewhere else. he or she may not come back that's the way i look at customer in my sales time if you understand you don't allow him or her go and have a taste of from another company you will lose him or her completely so sometimes you must lay down your profit to retain the customer while you are waiting good time to come that is important the second bit of course is that you need to have multiple choices when it comes to supply of, uh, I mean, of a particular item. Uh, some of them may have stock, some may not. And you just need to check on a couple of them. It is advisable you have like four or five, depending on the kind of business it is. If you don't have the murky water system, you are talking of speed now. If a customer come knocking when you resume, how quickly can you attend to that? Who are the suppliers that can make it available, even if that's from, from extra cost? We weigh all the pros and cons. The, the, the profile of every other transaction is already there. Try them out. So you see the leverage you have in terms of applied item. If because that is the first thing that adds to, that makes a difference in your cost profile. The, the, I mean supply the item you purchase to, to to improve upon or to transform. If that is not well done, you run into murky waters. With you. But I can see uh, Mr. Debbie see there. I think he has something very related to say. Over to you, sir. Oh, it's our time is off. <laughs> our time is off now. Uh, but uh, uh, ah, it's already twelve. Another class is starting right now. Okay, so but um, okay, this is what I'll do. Uh, I will give room that we <laughs> we drop our question, and then uh, we will take this on on and on. Uh, okay, let me take Mr. DBC for the last session and then we will we'll close because we have actually started another class. Uh, another class, another forum. <laughs> All right, so uh, Mr. DBC, I'm trying to pick out your. Is it a DBC or DBC? DBC. Okay, go ahead. It's still muted. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, wait one second. I think I'm having. All right, okay. But Mr. Because, Debbie, of the, because of our. Sorry, yes, sir. Can you hear me, you, sir? You, uh, you will do the vote of times when you finish speaking. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, yes, sir. Uh, because of our time, uh, let, let me just say this. The last caller actually is a colleague of mine, and I have uh, some input for him in addressing some of those problems he had directed. Yeah. Uh, I will call him personally. He's a member of the team. I will, I will talk to him on how to overcome some of the challenges. So that is not to waste our time further here. Yeah. So on that note, I want to say a very big thank you to the facilitator and the organizer of this training and all the participants. Thanks and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you uh, to everyone. Uh, I did promise for those that joined early, the first 20 people that joined early, they will get uh, uh, the e-copy of the certificate for this training free of charge. But those that join after that are interested, uh, they will have to then, uh, uh, what do you call it?